Can you tell me a little bit about how Ocean Minds works? Well, what it is is we work uh, very closely with chefs in restaurants and and in markets as well, and we help them. We help the chefs try and determine what are good sustainable seafood items. So the first thing we do when we when we have a chef inquire about the program, we work through their list of seafood, let them know what is good, what is a bad item, exactly why it's good or bad, and then we try and find alternatives to some of these bad items. And then to start on the program, they commit to remove at least one unsustainable item right at the start, uh, and then continue on continuous improvement about one every six months. So essentially what we do is we work with the chefs because they're too busy to do all the research on their own, help them identify what are good sustainable options, help them source those options, and then in turn they highlight those options right on their menus with the OceanWise logo uh, so that it's clearly identifiable for us when we go into restaurants. Can you talk a little bit about the implications of this? So are we saving species of fish already four years in or are we just sort of having the demand? No, we're absolutely, we're starting to see uh, some of the impacts we're working on right now quantifying exactly what those impacts mean. But just to give you an idea, uh, one of our partners uh, that signed on this year is a very large partner, Compass Group Canada. Uh, they run a lot of the uh, food service in uh, in higher education, universities, colleges, uh, but they have high-end restaurants as well. They do remote camps. Uh, they do a, a lot of different properties. And for their one change, they removed a quarter of a million pounds of unsustainable Atlantic salmon off menus across Canada. Uh, I mean, just that alone, that one partner, that one change is, is pretty impressive. So the cumulative, to, the cumulative effect, obviously, with, with now being at uh, 175 partners and over 2,000 locations across Canada, obviously the cumulative effect of that uh, and across different species is, is massive. Okay, is there a cost to consumers or operators at all? Or are we paying a premium for these fish? Or? Well, it's, uh, that's a good question because in some cases, in some cases uh, you do find that sustainable seafood can be slightly more expensive. It's like organic produce. It can be more expensive. And the reason why is because, and it should be more expensive, I mean, the reason why is because the fishermen and farmers, if they catch their fish on a hook and line, they have to put in a lot more effort and they don't catch as many uh as many fish as they could when they do a bottom trawl and just drag a net through the bottom of the ocean and catch whatever is in, the, in its path. So there, there in some cases there is a premium, but on the flip side, the benefit is is that you're getting a much higher quality seafood. Rather, something that's caught by a hook and line is pristine, whereas when you cram it into the back of a net and stuff everything else in there, it's all scarred and bruised and you're getting a lower quality seafood. So there's a quality benefit to it. But the it's definitely not the case that sustainable seafood is always more expensive. To give you that, again, that example from Compass Group Canada, they switched from unsustainably harvested Atlantic cod and switched over to a sustainable MSC certified Alaskan pollock, and that cut their cost almost in half. So it was actually a less expensive option for them and saved them money. So it's it's certainly it's a myth that it's always more expensive, but um, but I think. At the same time, I don't want people to think that it shouldn't be more expensive because I think the whole point is is we're trying to build this market for sustainable seafood and we want this to trickle right down to the fishermen and the farmer and allow them to conduct their operations more sustainably and get value for their products.